This is Cultish Tendencies 9 and entitled The Abu Khadijites Continuing Implosion. And then there were three. And it will focus on some issues that have arisen regarding Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi's recent speech in which he criticised individuals as being paupers in knowledge and riffraff. Some Tunisian brothers visited Sheikh Rabia very recently and asked him concerning these particular statements. Their question being, and it's been translated, Our Sheikh, may Allah preserve you, there are some youth present in Tunisia who revile their brothers and say of them that they are paupers in knowledge and riffraff, and they show partisanship towards Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. Sheikh Rabi responded quite emphatically, saying, quote, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi does not have any evidence with him, and not even a half piece of evidence. The Sheikh then quoted the ayat, the English rendition being, say, bring your evidence if you are truthful, close quote. Sheikh Rabi continues, use this verse as proof against them and its likes and demand evidences from them. What are the paupers in knowledge? They are those who have no knowledge. But these accused ones, they are teachers and they are graduates from the university and they have doctorates and master's qualifications and among them are those who have ever efforts in dawah. He then quotes the verse again, say, bring your evidence if you are truthful, close quote. Continuing, he said, so if they are not truthful in bringing these evidences, then they are the liars and oppressors the one who reviles people without evidence, this is lying. Do not speak about anyone except with proofs and evidences, as clear as the sun. Muhammad bin Hadi does not have anything with him. He has not even an iota of proof. There is only oppression, zulm, therein. And that was the end of Sheikh Rabi's answer to that particular question. The reason this brings up interesting parallels is because these descriptions given here by our Sheikh Rabir, Hafizahullah, are attributable and characteristics of those now who are graduating, or sorry, gravitating away from Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and hiding under Sheikh Rabi's wing. None other than the Abu Khadijites. Abu Khadija, Abu Hakim recently did their usual uh, tweets that they visited the Sheikh and that uh, he recognized them. Um, I'm not sure why they wanted to tweet such a message that he recognized them, um, because Shaitan is also recognizable um, for the evil that he does. So recognizing someone means what in this particular context? Anyway, continuing with this particular aspect, I'd like to draw the parallel from what Sheikh Rabi has said here, because the descriptors, as I've mentioned, fit these individuals, not only Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, who they were very, very recently tight with, it fits them, the Abu Khadijites, specifically as well. They have lied against individuals. They have slandered and oppressed individuals without an iota of proof. And they've been very effective in getting the ear of the few shuyuk that they've continued to go to, who have then believed them as they've been the ones preponderant in their message and lies to those particular shuyuk. Also, an interesting point here from Sheikh Rabi's answer is that he defends these particular individuals saying that among them are teachers, graduates from the university, those who have doctorates and master's qualifications, and those who have efforts in the dawah. And what is uh, of concern here is that those who were slandered from America, from the UK, organizations, individuals, I won't name them, we know who they are, who have efforts in the dawah, who have studied in Medina, some of them, who have PhDs from Medina, some of them, have masters from Medina University, and other academic and religious qualifications. When they were being slandered, no defense was given of these particular individuals. And the slander was emanating from Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. I talk specifically about myself, so that's why I can mention the slander, and I can talk about Brixton, 
because Brixton asked Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi to bring his evidence, a half piece of evidence, an iota of evidence, and he didn't bring it. And yet there was no defense to what we're seeing now. Also, the Abu Khadijites were leveling similar slanders. You only have to look back at the tweets from Abu Khadija regurgitating the Abul Hassan um, agreement from 1999 and mentioning in October 2017 that Sheikh Rabir and Mohammed bin Hadi refute me specifically. What he basically did is he asked um, Darul Sunnah in London, who are his lackeys there, to remove their concocted refutation of me regarding the um, Abul Hassan agreement, which they did. If you check their website at that time, those particular papers had been removed and Abu Khadija had just slapped a new date on it, October 2017, and put it up as though it was a fresh refutation. For any discerning eye and for any um, individual, don't have to be too intelligent to look at this, we all know that Sheikh Rabir was in hospital and been flown to Jeddah from Medina around September, October. So it's very, very unlikely, highly unlikely that the Sheikh is going to sit and do an extensive refutation against me and Brixton on Abul Hassan's agreement of nearly 20 years ago when he's recovering from major surgery and being very, very ill. I think any discerning individual, whether you're part of the cult or not, will agree with me on that particular observation. Anyway, the question comes now is where the Sheikh says, sticking with this first question, the one who reviles people without evidence, this is lying. Okay, this is lying. So can we call anyone who's done this based on Sheikh Rabbi's statement, liars? And if we can, then isn't it a point of concern that those self same people have now gravitated towards Sheikh Rabir and are not speaking or saying anything concerning Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. And you can still find a plethora of tweets from Abu Hakim, from Abu Khadija, from Abdullah al-Hamami, from all of them concerning their, their close allegiance and alliance with Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and his previous defenses concerning them. The questioner then says to um, Sheikh Rabir, he asks him, or he states, sorry, this tribulation has spread in Tunisia. Sheikh Rabir responded, this fitna has torn apart Salafis across the world. It has spread to every place and not just in your city alone. Yes, this has happened over the last 20 years, not just very recently because of Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi's statements. Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and the, the close circle of, of scholars who Sheikh Rabir is a part of have been um, privy to this fitna spreading. Privy in what way? And if you don't understand the word um, privy, please look it up in, in, instead of going and exaggerating the statement and saying that I've accused them. No, they've been privy because they've had those who have orchestrated the fitna, the Abu Khadijites and their ilk, who I reiterate from my previous um, cultish tendencies, reside here in Jeddah, in Riyadh, some in Medina, and they just fuel it. They have orchestrated this fitna in order to try and reign supreme as the Salafis, okay? The second question that came from the Tunisian brothers um, were regarding some youth who stumble in every tribulation. And in the next cultish tendencies, I, I will leave this specifically to cultish tendency 10, which is going to follow very quickly on the heels of cultish tendency nine, inshallah. This particular statement will be directed at individual, none other than Dr. Abdullah Lahmami, who likes to talk about being on the winning team, okay, and those who, when a tribulation comes, are not sure which way to go. We will focus on Abdullah Lahmami and the duplicity and the hypocrisy of some of his statements in light of what has um, developed very recently. We'll move on. There was a fourth question from these individuals where they said, Our Sheikh, some of our brothers who are students in Medina, they left the gathering of Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. And so they, they were accused um, by these people who follow this oppressive way 
the oppressive way of Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, I hasten to add, this is the inference here. They announced a boycott of them. So those who left Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi were boycotted by those who have stayed, remained with Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. Sheikh Rabir said, the ones who boycotted them are oppressors. It was not befitting for them to do that. Those who show bigotry towards falsehood and blindly follow without any proof or evidence, evidence they are blind. And this is the path of the people of desires. The Abu Khadijites were upon this and to a greater extent are still upon this. Just because they've gravitated more to Sheikh Rabir now and quietly abandoned Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi does not mean that they are not upon this way. It's similar if we remember Sheikh Fala al Harbi, the Abu Khadijites Maktaba Salafiya cult were vehement in their defense of him and adherence to his way, which was seen as being very, very extreme and harsh. And he was refuted eventually by Sheikh Rabir, but before that for, by other Mashaykh. The Abu Khadijites were upon that way. This was their manhaj. So once he was refuted, they didn't say anything about him. They moved over sneakily like they'd never been with him, but they didn't refute him in the way they've refuted other individuals, the Jordanian Mashaykh, the Kuwaiti Mashaykh, other, other Mashaykh, they did that Yemeni Mashaykh, they didn't do that. Similarly, you don't see or hear any vociferous voice from Abu Khadija, Abu Hakim, Amjad Rafiq, the milkshake. You don't see that Dr. Lahmami, you don't see that vociferous refutation against these individuals. And we're going to look very shortly at how they go to extremes in praising and defending and go to the other end of the spectrum in defaming and belittling. This is a trait of this cult, the Abu Khadijites. And going off at a tangent slightly, we need to observe a particular path, trend that will emerge and Allah knows best, inshallah, among Abu Khadija and his ilk. And that is none other than they will put themselves in a position very soon, because they've been doing this steadily, where there will be no reference to scholars. The reference will only be to them and their followers who are more blind in their adherence to these individuals than we see of the Hanafiya, than we see of those who follow the Shafi Madhab and the other Madahib. We've criticized and we um, have, have, I think, been very harsh on denigrating those who follow madhabs, madahib. And some of the criticism in it is in its just place when it's knowledge based. But this cult and elements of Salafis have become more ardent in their blind following than these who follow the madahib, Allah musta'an. But coming back now, the pendulum from one extreme of praise to disparagement is a characteristic of Abu Khadija, the Abu Khadijites, his cult, Abu Hakim and the others. And remember, Abu Hakim is part of the cult. He hasn't got his own cult yet. Then the fifth question came to the Sheikh. Some of them, when we argue with them, say there is no evidence. They say the evidences will soon come. This is very interesting because we know this is um, speech that is from Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and um, some of the, the scholars that I will refer to very shortly and their criticisms and complaints concerning Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi will be read out shortly. Excerpts from them will be read out very shortly, inshallah. Sheikh Rabir responded, Soon, soon, this is a lie. There are no evidences. When they come with evidences, then we are with the evidence. However, speaking about people with falsehood, then no. Sheikh Mohammed does not have any evidences. He came with this speech and we read it and we did not find any evidence within it. These ones whom he spoke of are university graduates. There are doctorates among them, but he belittled his brothers and disfigured their reputation without any proof or evidence. Do not accept the speech of anyone who revolves the Salafis without any proof and without any clarification. 
again, coming back to this point, Sheikh Rabia repeats this point about the qualifications and experience of the individuals he has belittled, disfigured their reputation without proof or evidence. This happened with Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi to some of us. We were direct recipients of this. Yet there was no defence. Yet there was no defence. And those who Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi is defending, or sorry, Sheikh Rabia is defending now, if it's the Abu Khadijites, then with doctorates, then yes, you've got uh, Dr. Abdullah Lahmami, you've got the milkshake, Amjad Rafiq, but uh, Abu Khadija has a, a BA in teaching, in education. Uh, Abu Hakim, as we know, dropped out of the university, failed many times. I don't know what quali quali qualification he has, and he cannot say he has a de degree in ghettoology, because that's no such academic um, endeavor or rigor required for that. So who these individuals are, I'm sure that they are of that um, caliber that the Sheikh has referred to, but also of the same caliber were those who were reviled and whom we have um, authentic reports that sadly Sheikh Rabir actually advised and admonished individuals that if they do not boycott or refute these individuals who had PhDs, who have degrees, master's degrees, were active in the Dawah, specifically from America that, that I know of, that if they were not boycotted or refuted, then the individuals that the Sheikh was adjuring to do that would be boycotted and refuted before as well. And we've heard similar statements um, from the Brixton conference when Sheikh Salim swore by the Lord of the Kaaba that this statement was said to Sheikh Ali Hassan that if he didn't bring down Magrawi, then Sheikh Ali Hassan would be brought down as well. And the reason I'm highlighting this now is because what is good for the goose is surely good for the gander. Those brothers who were disparaged, those Shuyuk who were disparaged without reputa with, with, and their reputations disfigured without any proof or evidence, Sheikh Sultan um, Eid, um, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim al Rahili, and others who I will be coming to very shortly. Why weren't they defended at that time? That's the question. Why weren't they defended at that time? And just a side point, why hasn't Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi mentioned the Abu Khadijite cult specifically? What is this? Why haven't they been refuted openly? Um, and we've just heard these indirect statements to the pauper in knowledge and the riffraff and, and, and evidences like this. Anyway, I digress. Continuing. We want to move on to a point here. The sixth question, and then we'll move away from this speech very shortly, this, this question and answer session with Sheikh Rabia. The sixth question came, when we speak to one of them, he says, I am silent. I will not enter, enter into this tribulation. Sheikh Rabia said, it is obligatory upon them to stand against falsehood, against oppression. Allah Azawajal said, quoting the English rendition, if you aid Allah's cause, then Allah will aid you and make your feet firm, close quote. The Abu Khadijites are silent. Where's their bold rep refutation of Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi? They're silent. They sneaked over to Sheikh Rabia as though they, they were never with Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi. And yet you're seeing tweets now, where are those who've been criticizing and using the speech of Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi? Where are they? They're silent. We need clarification. I, I haven't been um, re recording any cultish tendencies recently. So I think the reference may be to some others because there's someone called Sheikh Abdullah Al Ahmed who wrote 19 points about the Sa uh, Sa'ifika, what they're upon, the, the paupers in knowledge. Um, I'm not even going to read that. I've got that in front of me. There are 19 points he mentions. Maybe it's from this particular um, group of individuals who are with this particular sheikh that they're referring to. But we will conclude on the uh, answer um, session with the question and answer session with Sheikh Rabia. And this is a very key point. The questioner then asks a seventh question. When tribulations arise among Salafis, who are the sheikhs you advise that we return back to? Sheikh Rabir, Hafidahullah, said, quote, You have Sheikh Ubaid and Sheikh al-Bukhari and come back to me and those who traverse upon their way from among the Salafis. I'll read that again. The questioner asked, When tribulations arise among Salafis, who are the sheikhs you advise that we return back to? Remember that question. 
Sheikh Rabir, Hafidahullah, responded, you have Sheikh Ubaid and Sheikh Al-Bukhari and come back to me and those who traverse upon their way among the Salafis. Now, if we go back in time to 1999, Brixton, London, the Abul Hassan agreement stated this or something similar. Abul Hassan in the agreement that was written stated this quote if they differ all of them that's the both sides must refer to the two sheikhs ali hassan al halabi and salim al hilali may allah protect them because as far as i know they are best acquainted with the affairs of the dawa and its followers in this country and this arbitration is necessary because most of the points of difference between the two sides classifies under the established Shari procedures of dealing in regard to understanding the situation of the Dawa and its bearers and in understanding the issue of giving precedence to the Masale over the Mafasid, giving precedence to the benefits over the harms. That was the statement of Abul Hassan in 1999. Sheikh Rabir, after agreeing to the points of disagreement. And for those who have doubt about that, I will read it when Sheikh Rabia endorsed this, when it was faxed to him and we witnessed the facts and his facts coming back. Actually, I collected these facts from the shop that it was faxed to. Sheikh Rabia responded after praising Allah and sending salutations of, of peace, salutations of peace upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and companions. He said, verily, I have inspected the ruling issued by our brother Abul Hassan as Sulaimani concerning our Salafi brothers in England, which comprises of 27 sections. I wish for the two conflicting sides whose affair has reached agreement and denunciation of differences and dissension to adhere to what is this ruling and agreement. In abiding by it, there is a great amount of good and prevention of dangerous evils. I thank Allah and then I thank Abul Hassan and our brother Salim Al Hilali, as well as the two sides between whom the agreement was made, for arriving at this blessed result. We implore to Allah that this will result in good fruits in the future. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his family and companions. Written by Rabi bin Hadi Umar Al Madkali on the 11th of the 5th month, 1420. Now, let me give a quick statement here for those who will be jumping up and down and probably frothing at the mouth of C.C. Abul Hassan. Everyone abandoned this agreement when Sheikh Rabir nullified that statement once he had been approached by Murad al Jazair, who used to be with the Abu Khadijites and now he's no longer with them and they are at odds and enmity with each other for a number of years surprise surprise and when the Abu Khadijites went and implored Sheikh Rabia to um, go against this agreement to try and find fault with it and how he found fault with it is that he referred to this particular point as a false principle that false principle of going back to the two sheikhs and Sheikh Rabia stated about that particular point likewise this is how he, Abul Hassan, obliges the two opposing parties to return their affairs when they differ to the two sheikhs, Ali Hassan and his colleague. Where is this Hizbi who calls allegiance to himself, Al Halabi and Al Hilali, in respect to the statement of Allah? And then he quotes the verse. So, again, just in case we are unclear, Sheikh Rabir, when refuting Abul Hassan, Abul Hassan's agreement, the 1999 agreement, which you just heard he endorsed after he read the 27 points, he states that this is a false principle. Likewise, quoting him, this is how he obliges, Abul Hassan obliges the two opposing parties to return to their affairs when they differ to the two sheikhs, Ali Hassan and his colleague, Salim Al Hilali. Where is this Hizbi who calls allegiance to himself, Al Halabi and Hilali, in respect to the particular ayat of Allah that he refers to? Some may think, what is Abdul Haq getting to? The Sheikh says here to the question, 
when tribulations arise among Salafis, who are the sheikhs you advise that we return back to? Sheikh Rabi says, you have Sheikh Ubaid and Sheikh Al-Bukhari and come back to me. This is something that causes concern because almost 20 years ago, it was said and subsequently endorsed. Then after that, it was refuted by Sheikh Rabia, Hafidahullah. And now we have a similar statement being said very recently to brothers who visited from Tunisia. Um, this is concerning. As is normal now, this particular recording will not, inshallah, exceed more than 30 minutes. We're at 25 minutes, nearly 26 minutes. But what I want to do now is quote some of the Shuyuk who have said, similar to what Sheikh Rabi has said, and more many years ago, but has been ignored by the Abu Khadijites, by some of the Shuyuk. And the question again, that, and the concern that comes is why? Why has it been ignored? Why have their concerns, which have been written, which have gone to court here in Saudi Arabia, been ignored up until this point now? And it's only now that the same issues are being addressed. Sheikh Sultan Al Eid wrote a book critiquing Muhammad bin Hadi entitled An Advice to the Generality of Brothers and an Elucidation of Lies and Falsehood, a discussion with Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi. This was in 2009. And on page three, he said, excerpts I'll read, some beloved brothers within the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and outside of it from the people of knowledge requested that I uncover this vile approach and refute the rumors and claims of our brother, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, so that those with little knowledge do not get deceived. I have written this clarification based on proofs from our brother Muhammad bin Hadi because the man is a coward and does not openly declare his slander on audio tapes or books. Our brother Sheikh Muhammad has spread rumours which he has not brought any evidences for up to now. But Allah, he does not enter the house from its doors and does not follow the Shari way of giving nasiha. Up to now, he has not come to us with any inquiry, communication or letter about the falsities he has promoted. We wish that he would raise the matter to our senior Masheikh if he has spread, if what he has spread is true, but he has rejected doing this. That's one aspect. Sheikh Sultan goes on to say, Our noble brother, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, has been speaking about my honour and deen for three years, and I've been silent for three years for the following reasons. What he has mentioned about me are merely false suspicions, delusions, and hypothetical ideas. So he says things like, here it is, you will see, and I know more than you all know, and my words will soon become clear to you, and Thikart have narrated to me. And then he is not even able to name these Thikart. This is what Muhammad bin Hadi used to refute Sheikh Farley for, and then Muhammad bin Hadi falls into it himself. Again, when Brixton approached Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, we asked him for evidences of the statements he'd made publicly against Brixton and myself and Abu Hajar. We then complained to the Ministry of Religious Affairs because we thought and felt that Zulam, oppression, had been done to us because no evidence, no substantive evidence had been given. Nothing was substantiated. I repeat, I also write, wrote to Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi a private letter that remained private from my side asking for evidences and failing such deliverance of evidence, I had a right as a citizen, as, a, as a, uh, an expat working in Saudi Arabia, as a Muslim, to seek my rights in court. And he didn't respond. Continuing, Sheikh Sultan Al Eid continued, Sheikh Mohammed and those who are with him have taken a new way in Jah, which they have become distinguished with. So repeating, have they taken a new way in Jahwa Ta'deel, which they have become distinguished with? I fear that one who has no knowledge might follow them in this, and this is why it is necessary to clarify it. And then he goes on and names a number of points, lists a number of points 
using vague and general matters. So if we discuss with him, he's unable to clarify them or explain them, and he's unable to present evidence for them. Okay, these, these are some of the things. The third, another point, gratification in, in that which one has not been given. So you will find with them blowing up matters out of proportion and glorification of their speech with terms of expression, which makes the listener think that these speaking have ilm and khabar, or that he has come across something which no one else has before. Other statements that he has made, and that he has knowledge of so-and-so's misguidance and enmity to al sunnah years ago even though within that time he used to give taskiyah to them and defend them for the general benefit as he's claimed use of unseen affairs and guesswork so if it is said what is your evidence they say we know and you don't know or it will become manifest to us there's so much here i've got pages that can be read but it will be coming out in a particular um academic paper written by one of our colleagues, mashallah tabarakallah, Abdul Haq um, Ade. There's a 150 page plus um, refutation of Dr. Abdulillah Lahmami in which all of this is going to be contained. Um, I've gone over the 30 minute um, mark and I want to conclude, but I will move to Sheikh Ibrahim al Rahili, whose case is quite well known. And what he did he gave um, Muhammad bin Hadi three options. One was a knowledge-based book. Two, an open academic discussion. Three, a divinely legislated Sharia court judgment. And as some may know, that he had to proceed with the third option because the other two were exhausted and Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi did not reply or respond. Concluding that I won't go into the details from Sheikh Ibrahim al Rahili, it's all there. It will come to light soon for those who have not read it in either Arabic or English. But also, Sheikh Salim at Tawil wrote as recently on the tw as the 24th of January 2018, and he also criticized Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. And why am I bringing all of this now to the listeners? So they know that this has been there before, years before. You've heard dates of 2009 from Shuyuk. Also, that which is being criticized um, in Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi was directed at lesser than him. But those who Sheikh Rabi is defending now with doctorates and masters and efforts in the Dawah, and yet nothing was done. And the reason and questions around that must still remain. Is that because these individuals were not blindly adhering or sticking very tightly to particular shiuk, that they were not behaving in the way that the Abu Khadijite cult was behaving, that the Abu Khadijite cult was disparaging anyone who had knowledge and had efforts in the Dawah that had not aligned to them, because this is a trait of theirs. And as Sheikh Salima Tawil said in part of his speech, as whenever you, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, differ with a person, you bring forth a new term for him, along with a sect name after him, such as al Ma'ribi, al Magrawiya, al Ruriya, al Halabiya, al Hajuriya, al Ruhailiya, al Suhaimiya, and other such titles which we do not know of. And Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi has done that. Um, could I be criticized for doing similar because I've labeled these individuals the Abu Khadijites? Some may say, yes, that could be a criticism leveled um, towards me. But I use this term because Maktab al-Salafiyah is not a descriptor that should be used. Salafiyah should not be used and, and bastardized with these individuals using it as an umbrella, umbrella. And I'm not saying Salafiyah is bastardized or is a bastard name. I'm saying it shouldn't be bastardized. If you know the term, it means that it should not be misappropriated by those who are a cult and have no interest or little interest in Salafia. They have more interest in their hegemony and controlling the dawah and business. And I'll conclude on that point because, as I've said, there I, I had regarding the statements and comments from Shiyu concerning Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, 13 pages, but I've gone over um, my usual remit and I will end there. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdi kashadu an la ilaha illa ant. A stuck for quite a while. Uh, cultish tendencies ten will follow very shortly, 
and um, it's called, it will be entitled Silence of the Laham. <laughs> 